Welcome back to lesson six of our journey through Psalms 1 to 50. The Psalms for this lesson have taken us deeper into the subject of praise. These Psalms don't teach, request or lament. They simply declare who God is and what he has done over and over again. Intellectually, we might wonder what praise is all about. Why is it such an important aspect of Christian life and so much scripture is devoted to it? When we look at the world around us, we see examples of worship everywhere. People worship sport to an extent, particularly football, chanting team names and wearing the team colours. To be honest, the only time I'm ever starstruck or lost for words is when I meet a football player. It seems like there is a need for us to worship, an innate instinct to have something or someone to look up to and share in their glory. And so, in one sense, we humans praise all the time. It's a way of life, whether we realise it or not. Even in our everyday moments, like when we have a, a cup of coffee or a particularly well-cooked meal, we give awards and accolades to those who do good things. We want to give recognition and glory to those who deserve it, especially when it's us. In Psalm 34, David said, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. Now, you've probably seen a prism. It's just a small piece of glass, which when held up to the light, splits it into the most beautiful spectrum of colors. The colors were always there, but they blend together to form white light, which we can sometimes fail to appreciate because we're so used to it. It's only when the light refracts that you see the incredible beauty hidden within it. Praise is like a prism. We all know that God is good, but we can get so used to knowing and hearing it that we lose our awe and wonder at just how magnificent he is. When we praise him, we are holding up a prism to the light of the world and appreciating the beauty of the different aspects of his nature and his character. The more we praise him, the more we snap out of our apathy and self-focus. As we praise, we see more of God. Our faith is built and he is glorified. Praising God is how we set our compass. I hope you find today's lesson helpful as we think more about the role, purpose and many benefits of worship in our lives. Once you've worked through the questions, press play on the video again and I'll share a bit more about the joy in worship that is directed to God and the danger of worship that is directed anywhere else. Human beings were created to worship and glorify God reflecting his image in all of creation. Even now in our fallen world, people are natural worshippers. And as it says in Romans 1, we either worship our creator or we turn our eyes onto something he created and worship that instead. Worshipping anything other than God is idolatry. Hearing that word probably conjures up images of people bowing down to little statues or lighting candles at a shrine. That sort of idolatry is forbidden throughout the Bible. It is an insult to God to ascribe his greatness, his provision, his love to rocks and stones and fairy tales. And it mars our reflection of his image. Here's what I mean by that. God made us to worship himself. As we worship him, we get to know him better and show him better in our lives. Essentially, we become more like whatever we worship. Now, that is great news if we worship Jesus and terribly dangerous if we worship something else. Psalm 135, 15 to 18 says this, The idols of the nations are silver and gold, made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. In the Old Testament, when God's people were at their most rebellious, Jeremiah called them senseless and foolish because they were being taught by wooden idols. And he said their worthless idols made them stumble in their ways. God calls us to holiness and love, purity, compassion, mercy and generosity. But idols do not have such high morals. God always linked the oppression, and wickedness and violence in ancient Israel with the idols they had set up for themselves. We might not worship statues and shrines today, perhaps, but idolatry is still just as prevalent. If we worship money, we'll be excited by our pay packet each month. We'll rate people by their wealth. We'll find security in our saving account and we'll despair when investments fail and interest rates change. 
because our whole way of life is shaped and directed by whatever we worship. In the end, while worship involves praise and devotion, it goes much deeper than that, beyond just what we say or actions we perform. Paul tells us in Romans 12, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Worship is our life. We are all giving ourselves, our bodies, our hearts, and our minds to something. We must examine ourselves to see if we are giving ourselves to gods without mouths, ears, or eyes, the things in our world that demand everything, but give nothing in return. In Psalm 31, David begins, In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. This is where our worship belongs, when we give our lives to the God who made us. We can see in this psalm alone how different God is to idols. He has ears to hear us in verse 2. He has hands to hold us safe in verse 5. He sees our troubles and knows what burdens we bear in verse 7. He bestows his goodness upon us and is a shelter to hide in. Throughout the psalm, David calls God his rock, his fortress, deliverer and shelter. David's life, hopes and dreams are hidden in the Lord. God is his hope for today and tomorrow. God is his safety. God is his rescuer. God is his provider. God is his vindication and on and on. David's worship isn't just bringing praise, but setting his heart on God alone. Throughout the psalm, David calls God his rock, fortress, deliverer, and shelter. David's life, hopes, and dreams are hidden in the Lord. God is his hope for today and tomorrow. God is his safety. God is his rescuer. God is his provider. God is his vindication and on and on. David's worship isn't just bringing praise, but setting his heart on God alone. And out of that worship comes a secure life. David says confidently in verse 14, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Where do you turn in times of trouble? Where is your refuge or your hiding place when things are too much? These are acts of worship, and they reveal who we have really set our hearts on. The good news for us is this. As we worship Jesus, we will not only know the love and security he gives us, but we will become more like him. As Paul affirms in Romans 12, when we worship God as living sacrifices, we will not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but transformed. Transformed into what? transformed more into the image, beauty, love and character of Christ himself. Music